What's good, YouTube? And welcome to the house and another episode of Budget Beatdown. This has been the talk of many conversations that I've come across. Effect Veiler versus Infinite Impermanence, and people saying Impermanence has completely power crept Veiler in terms of a card. Well, I think that statement is a little exaggerated, but there is a lot to add with impermanence and a reason that it's demanding an $80 price tag, making a playset of these about $240, but we're still not to the general release there. Uh, we'll see what happens with that price as more copies are released, but Effect Veiler can be found at $1.30, making a playset around $5, a much budget-friendly version that also has a level 1 Spellcaster Tuner body, which can make it interesting once we get Crystron Needle Fiber. I also think that depending on the format, you may want to consider one or the other as Trap Negation, Monster Negation, etc. develops within a format. Speaking of developed formats, I think there's one card left out of this conversation, so introducing a third fighter, boys. Forbidden Chalice. I remember Zodiac format. Do you? Yes, the Zodiacs. $30 ultimate rares that spiked even further and had a huge impact on zoo format and actually have some regional tops recently. Forbidden Chalice is a monster of a card at times that has similar effect negation. So let's get into all three of these cards, the pros and cons, and the immediate con of why Chalice typically is left out of this conversation. The roll of the dice. It's always going to be impactful on who's going first or second, and Impermanence and Failure both say if I lose the dice roll and go second, I have a card that is still useful and Valor, if i'm going first will still be playable during my opponent's turn when they start trying to play back against my board chalice if you lose the dice roll has no value going second other than you can start to use it to pick apart their your opponent's boards which shouldn't be underestimated we've seen that that's powerful with their onboard dryden we've seen that it can do things in this current format against odd eyes vortex so losing the dice roll isn't everything if you don't find a good place to activate impermanence during your opponent's turn you can also similarly save it into being able to force a monster negate where Valor cannot because it's restricted to only your opponent's main phases but usually in a setup deck there's a place to activate it such as on perhaps electromite such as perhaps on crystal needle fiber once it's here so there is a huge merit already to both of the others than chalice which ends up leaving it out of some conversations but i think as formats develop chalice might find its place and we'll discuss that another place where it kind of falls talking about you know the dice roll if your opponent is setting up with alistair they're typically going second so you would hope that you know chalice can do something there but you like to let your opponent go first at times with invoked now even though it's a kind of set up deck and a permanence and valor hitting your opponents going first alistair is a huge huge blow to them where you can't really do that with your chalice you would have to be going first and setting up for that alistair to do it and hoping that they're not taking back row destruction hoping you don't get evenly matched etc that's a full power deck another one that is similar to lockdown both uh actually impermanence and your uh forbidden chalice is trickstar light stage trickstar light stage actually looks at both of these cards rather than valor and kind of has its way with them but all three negations can kind of not feel the best because of Lycoris being able to bounce monsters and these are two decks that are hurt in the ocg that are relatively full power right now in our discussion so i i do think it's worth noting that these decks do have an advantage or disadvantage for some of these cards now as i was saying the a part where valor kind of fails just a little for me odd eyes vortex dragon and similar cards we have the new fa synchro we have cards like masterpiece that perhaps you can get a force on with one of these two cards valor does nothing against pretty much any of those unless you're passing back turns and hoping for your traps and stuff to take care of the job which that's not the current format that could be a format but chalice and impermanence immediately have the ability to force that negate 
Especially if, like, say you had you draw, you top into impermanence and didn't have it, there's immediate use where Valor has no immediate use. Both of these cards end up having it, and that's why Chalice can be pretty powerful, but it's also where impermanence is shining in part of the conversation. Now, there is a card in Flood that if it was a secret rare would have been very expensive that out of all three of these actually only hits impermanence. And if we get into an OTK heavy format, Red Reboot will prove itself over impermanence. And that's where Chalice and Valor could shine. Impermanence, if it becomes a very heavy format that way, could get slapped down by Red Reboot and you can continue your OTK or even FTK, dare I say it. Whereas Valor can come down, and if it's an OTK, your your chalice was at least perhaps set to be able to stop that from happening. Reboot just stuffs this card completely, and it's something that we have relatively easy access to as a super rare. Yes, it's pricey. Yes, it gives them, you know, access to even more cards, but should it become an OTK kind of centric format and you're hoping impermanence will save you, you might want to count on a little something something else. But where impermanence truly shines over the others is floodgates. Now, I know you're looking at skill drain maybe, and John, chalice negates effects, so I mean, so does impermanence. Why are you showing that floodgate? Well, impermanence, if you set it across from a floodgate that's already active, ends up turning it off, and then you can further attempt to negate effects of other cards that are on the field while being able to finally go off. Let, let's name a different floodgate, shall we? Anti-spell fragrance, anybody? Impermanence can take care of anti-spell fragrance with a snap of your fingers should you be able to set up for a turn. And when, whenever a floodgate is out, it does typically become a grind game. So being able to access your cards under any floodgate, Imperial Order, Anti-Spell Fragrance, there's many powerful floodgates still, despite being limited. Impermanence is there to take care of them where these cards cannot take care of something like that. Being able to even set it across from zones of face down back rows and then perhaps getting a double negate or holding off a spell trap for a turn, that's pretty good. So that's really where impermanence starts to shine and show its value just a little bit more than Valor. Besides being either player's turn, any time, any way you want it, that's the way I need it. That's what this card screams and offers rather than the other cards. And I feel like also if we do get into truly back row heavy formats, there's monster negation like strike that stops Valor where it doesn't stop the other two. It, it's kind of sad a little bit for Valor, but there there's decks specifically for these cards that they, they really shine in. Like Altergeist Multifaker is going to love impermanence over the other two. The Altergeist deck loves its traps, loves its back row, and it definitely is going to shine there. Whereas in a deck where Valor is searchable, with Sage of Eyes of Blue, it might shine there a little more than Impermanence would by being able to just get negation searched out from your deck for relatively cheap or free. Now, the final card I would like to mention here as we come back full circle that might give Valor some bit of an argument is Crystron Needle Fiber. Remember that Tuner Body could come in useful, but if you're actually not playing a deck with Needle Fiber and you're using Valor, it could get reborn and used for a Needle Fiber against you. So you want to be a little bit careful mayhaps of that. That may seem like a niche situation, but Needle Fiber is a terrifying card and that's probably why you're playing Valor just a little bit. That's why the OCG ended up looking at it again. But all three of these cards, I think it's very safe to say overall, Infinite Impermanence wins, and its price point is not the proof of it. It's its ability to be played during either player's turn. Valor was very expensive when it came out. It, it is seeing a little bit of power creep by this, but its other factors will keep it in certain decks, perhaps. Forbidden Chalice is also worth in the conversation as the cheapest out of all of these, and the ability to start turning off your opponent's board as you begin pushing it in, and as a spell card, which there is Imperial Order, there is Anti-Spell, and in certain formats, you'll see it resurface 
perhaps over the other two, depending on what's going on. So thanks for watching. What did you think of the conversation? Forbidden Chalice, like I said, gets past Red Rebrew, like Effect Veiler, and you I think we'll still see it in certain formats come forward. Uh, that that 400 attack. Oh no, you've you've buffed up his monster. You've made a terrible mistake. But I definitely think it's worth the conversation because I have seen this jettison out of control in certain threads. I have seen it in Zodiac. I have seen it in Reddit. I've I've seen this happening a couple of places, and uh, the conversation always goes, "You fool! Impermanence has completely power crap failure," and it's it's not quite done that yet but at the same time i can agree as a whole of a card i feel like it's a little bit stronger but anytime you have to set back row it is susceptible to destruction past that turn one Baylor does stay in the hand so things like twin twister things like cosmic cyclone it is now available to be able to be hit and perhaps not perform what you wanted it to do especially if you end up being forced to go first by a deck like the invoke and they start playing things like twin twister realistically it comes down a little bit to the format and a little bit for what you really need to stop so there I, there will be times where Baylor could shine again over this and chalice could shine over it, in my opinion but for current format i do think impermanence is a more powerful card and the altergeist deck might carry that through a little bit